In the Neo region, there are this mysterious rune guard providing us with a mysterious coded message. When decoded, become For the nation, we can't forget the skyborn power, but we failed it. Today, I'll show you how this message was solved and how you can also do it too. Hey, welcome back. Before I get started, I want to give credit to every single person who solved the cipher previously before me. I didn't solve this cipher on my own, instead I'm just retracing the step and explaining to you guys step by step on how this cipher was solved. Anyway, let's get started. There are a total of 9 coded messages as presented on the screen. When ordered by their number of their entries, we get the following message. Now, if you're familiar with computer, you're probably familiar with converting text between binary to letters. And here is no different. By observing the message, you can see there's the dash between every single free digit of the message. This is going to be the separator of the message. In another word, it separates the message between one letter to another. Moving on, we can see that in every single field, it is made up of exactly the same three letters. Three, two, and a period. This is suggesting that we're dealing with a ternary number, which is using 0, 1, 2 as a base 3 operation. In another word, we have to find a way to map 3, 2, period to 0, 1, and 2. And the easiest way to do it is to simply map them in order. So period is going to map to 0, 2 is going to map to 1, and 3 is going to map to 2. So pretty much when we convert to the proper ternary number, we get the following. Uh, which we can map back to decimal by following a chart like here in case you're not familiar with ternary numbers. And this is the result when we put it back to the decimal. Now, starting from this point, it's pretty straightforward. You just convert this to letter by following the following chart where A is equals to 1 and B is equals to 2 and C is equals to 3. So for example, at the beginning here, we have 19, 2 and 5. Uh, 19 will be equal to S, uh, 2 will be equal to B, and E or 5 will be equal to E. So we get a, a S, B, E starting. When we're finally done converting all this decimal to letters, we get the following results, uh, which of course is not humanly readable. And the reason why it's not humanly readable is because it is uh, ciphered using a cipher. And so before we talk about the cipher itself, we must first understand what is a cipher or what is a cryptography. So in cryptography, normally you'll take a plain text and then go through a encryption to get a humanly non-readable encrypted message. It is commonly used in categories such as password, email, or Bitcoin, which is a form of cryptocurrency, which is of course where the word cryptocurrency come from. Now, Cypher and Mathematic have a really close relationship because after all, Cypher came originally from mathematical operation. In Mathematic, we also have a linear transformation function t which convert x to t, and of course we can do the inverse of the process uh, and convert y to x by putting it into the inverse of t which is t prime. In cryptography, this is no different. We will start with a plain text, which is our x, put it into an encryption function t, and then we get our cipher. And to convert the cipher back to a text, we simply have to put it back into the inverse function t prime or the decryption method. Nowadays, there are a lot of different cipher from simple one to complex one that you might have heard of, such as MD5 or SHA1, or even most recently the AES256, which is what majority of the encryption use nowadays. Now knowing the method is not enough, we also have to find the corresponding uh, encryption key K in order to properly decipher the message. And to be honest, finding the method and finding its corresponding key is no better than an educated guess. Looking back at the original message, we can probably guess it is one of the more simple cipher, probably like a cylindrical shift cipher, in which today the one we're going to uncover is going to be the Caesar cipher. So the Caesar cipher worked by shifting the letter by a couple of space and then wrap around. In the picture provided here, you can see the alphabet is shifted by free space. So in other words, a E is represented by a B or a C is represented by a F. And of course, in order to properly decrypt it, we just have to shift it back. So if we have an E in our encrypted message, we will treat that as a B. If we have an F in our encrypted message, we will treat that as a C. The number of space that we shift by here is our key. In other words, for this example here, our K key is actually equals to 3. The easiest way for us to actually decipher this is just to try every single combination and see which one makes the most sense to us. On the left side here, you can see some possible uh, key number K, something with 13 to 24 to 25 to 9. And you can see that for a different number K key, we get a different result and we can just check which one makes the most sense and hey, that's our decipher the message. But instead of purely just randomly guessing, we can actually make more educated guess. The first one we're going to use is going to be a frequency analysis. 
So a frequency analysis is simply counting how many times each letters appear. This works because in English letter, the number of frequency that a letter appear is not the same. In this graph, you can see that the letter E appeared dramatically more than other characters such as F or C, followed by the letter T and then O and A and so on. What this means is that given an enough big sample size, we can make an educated guess that the letter appear the most are most likely going to be mapping to E or if not T or O or something like that, instead of just trying every single one of the combination. And of course, this applies to higher letter count as well. TH is the most frequent combination of the two letters in the English alphabet. And of course, the most common three letter word is going to be the THE, as you might already have guessed it. Going back to the original ciphered message, uh, with its frequency analysis here, you can see that B and R appear the most with six times each, followed by the G, which is five times. So it is very likely for them to map to one of the more higher count frequency letters, such as uh, E, or if not, then maybe T, O, or A. And in contrast, it is very, very unlikely for them to map to one of the lower frequency counters, such as K, E, or J. Observing the ciphertext again, you can see this being applied in effect. I want to draft your attention to here and here, where there is the word G U R and G U V. Um, and you remember the most common frequently letter in English are going to be T and E, followed by the most common biogram in English letter T H, followed by the most English common word T H E D. Effectively, what this is telling us that the G U uh, beginning are most likely going to be the T H and the R going to be the E, so G, U, R together form the letter T, H, E. With that being said, we can make an educated guess while not being certain that the encryption key are potentially 13, which is the mapping between G, U, R to T, H, E. And finally, once we have converted all the letters shifted to a corresponding position, uh, this is the following message we get. Now, the spacing here is of course incorrect, so we're going to have to figure out the spacing ourselves still. But this is actually not too difficult. Uh, looking at the very, very beginning, you can see that the only word here possibly from form is uh, T H D D. This means that the very first word is going to be 4 F O R. Uh, and then followed by the where N A T H O N nation, and just going one by one like this, we can slowly figure out the correct spacing. And of course, this is how we get our final ciphered message. And so after we fix all the spacing, this is the original message we get as described at the beginning of the video. For the nation, we can't forget this sky one power, but we failed it. What exactly did this mean? We still have to see. I hope you learn a lot, especially more about cryptography in general and how it applied to our everyday life, and more importantly, how you can also do it too. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and comment, subscribe. See you guys next time.